Hello, and thank you very much for pursuing professional development here in the Greater Johnstown School District. Today's module is going to focus on classroom management, and we're going to move beyond the foundational aspects of classroom management that everyone needs to have in place and start to look at some of the skills that everyone needs to be able to master in order to run their day-to-day -day classroom uh, efficiently and effective and in a way that's safe for everyone involved. I'd like to call this uh, interpersonal interventions. Another way to think about this would be tier one interventions for disruptive behavior. These are the type of things that you can be applying one-on-one -on -one in class as content is being conveyed without stopping the class to have a meeting or uh, in-depth discussion. Please enjoy. We can't reach our destination unless we have a goal in mind. And in today's module, our goal needs to be what are the desired behaviors that we want to see students exhibiting in our classroom? If you ask any teacher on the street, I'm sure they can give you an endless list. And mine kind of starts at the basic students working, students showing respect for peers, teachers themselves, the students being on task, paying attention completing assigned tasks or assignments, and if we move down the list, we get into the things that are deeper in Danielson's model that really signal that you are a distinguished teacher. Uh, are the students helping each other? Are they asking appropriate questions and pursuing a deeper level of knowledge? Are the students checking each other's knowledge in appropriate ways and asking questions? And we cannot expect students to come into our classes fully formed with this material in their brains. We have to teach this to them. Um, procedural things like a student entering the room and how do they appropriately get to their seat, get their materials ready, and start the bell ringer need to be taught. And for the first week of school, they need to be taught more than once. And then they need to be rehearsed until that's just how things happen in your classroom. So at this point, you know, pause the video, maybe take a look at my list, and come up with a list of your own. What are the desired behaviors that you wish to see in a perfectly running classroom that you're in control of? And this is going to be our goal for shaping classroom norms, for informing students of what our expectations are, and to really, you know, hold ourselves up to what are high expectations in this uh, domain. Let's take a quick review of foundational classroom management concepts. Um, we won't belabor the points as long as we did in the initial module, if you had the pleasure of checking that one out, but we'll make sure we look at them at least a little bit to refresh ourselves. Every single day, we need to strive to establish a positive and productive classroom climate. Um, this is one where students and teachers and any other support staff that are around are respectful, efficient. We have our systems in place for collecting work, taking role, um, getting information out to the students. Those things are well rehearsed. Rules are posted, but they don't need to be there. Everyone knows them, and they're enforced consistently. We're conducting class efficiently and working from beginning to end, bell to bell, if you will, um, with smooth transitions. A point I'd like to make here, since we have a little bit of time, is that bell to bell is uh, you know, really kind of teacher shorthand. And what really the expectation for filling class time and for entering and, and ending a class is that the student has arrived in class, is in their seat, and is prepared to work prior to the late bell ringing. And at the end of the class, they don't just hop up and run out of the room like some of Pavlov's dogs, that there's a, a set procedure that we have in place for dismissing them. Whether it's as simple as, yes, you can go, dismissed by rows, there's an exit ticket involved. This needs to be determined by you and taught to the student.
As we continue our review of the foundational elements involved in classroom management, our two overarching points right now are establishing discipline and reaching all of the students in the classroom. As far as establishing discipline, please do make sure that you have a clear, limited list of the classroom rules. I would say no more than seven uh, posted in obvious places within the classroom. I would suggest one on every wall. Uh, and really try to maintain a consistency in the way those rules are enforced. Apply them fairly to all the students and really be honest and open about what is going to happen if a rule is violated. Uh, ben Franklin said if you enter into all your business dealings with all your cards on the table then no side in the business dealing is going to come out offended or feeling like they've been shortchanged or cheated. It's very similar in classroom discipline. Uh, if everyone understands what the rules of the road are, then you violate them and you, you understand what the consequences are going to be. This is crucial. Also, we should really make sure that we're trying to reach all the students in our classroom uh, with our delivery of the content. That delivery should be varied. It should not be the same from day to day, and it should not be the same the whole way through your class period most of the time. You want to make sure that you can encourage students to do their best, and this is really shaping those classroom norms, and apply nothing but proven classroom techniques. Use what research says works, and use it to the best of your ability. Let's take a moment to consider what behaviors we wish to avoid in class. We know that some of these things are going to happen and my list is by no means exhaustive. It's possible that students may become off task, sleep, throw items, they will frequently talk or have side conversations, they may interrupt you, sometimes with good ideas, but in an inappropriate fashion. They may use a phone or electronic device in class. They may engage in teasing or bullying, refusing assignments. They might even hit each other. Depending on the level of education you're working in, you will see more or less of each of these behaviors according to the age group. If we look at a couple of these, though, as far as interruptions or talking, uh, side conversations, some of these things, even throwing items, maybe at the garbage can. Some of these things are violations of procedure, but not necessarily a violation of the district code of conduct. I would remind you that a violation of procedure, a student just blurting out a question without raising their hand, does not necessarily constitute something that you should punish them for. Uh, you should reteach the procedure and move along and eventually shape that behavior so that their fallback is to comply with the procedure. If the student has violated the code of conduct, then you need to apply the punitive response uh, as per the code of conduct. Word of warning, responding to negative behaviors, whatever those negative behaviors are, may increase the behavior. So be sure before you start to yell, scream, or address something if you want to do it there and then in class or outside of the classroom. Let's start our look at Tier 1 classroom interventions with ways that we can reinforce positive behaviors, the desired behaviors in our classroom. Rewards and praise. As far as rewards are concerned, simple tangible rewards, possibly uh, school-wide positive behavior tickets, erasers, stickers, don't underestimate the power of a sticker, um, positive behavior support system in your class. You may have a token economy in place, you may have math bucks. Uh, it all depends if you're running a scripted program in either math or reading. Those come with suggested means of tangible rewards call home with good news. Yes, you can, can and should call home with positive reports. Uh, send a positive note or email home. 
this is a serious and and good investment in future good behavior on the part of the student. Use praise. Acknowledge specific behaviors. Johnny, I love the way you're sitting quietly waiting for the next instruction. Timmy, I love that you put your work right into the folder. Sarah, I'm thank you for waiting to sharpen your pencil until I was done speaking. Uh, these are the kinds of things that really shape those behaviors and increase the likelihood that positive behaviors are going to happen. Praise people when they're on task. Praise when they have a good attitude and they're involved in class. Smile, and studies show that frequently exposure to smiles will increase the likelihood of a smile and a good attitude on the part of the person that you are directing a smile to. So feel free to smile. You will get a good return on your investment. We know not every student behavior is going to be positive and on task. That being the case, there are a number of Tier 1 interventions we can use to bring students back to the work at hand. Included in this are encouraging their interaction with a more confident or positive peer. Uh, engaging with the student, maybe ask them questions, try and help them. Make sure that you clarify the assignment or directions. Sometimes a student is off task because they just missed what was happening and need someone to help them get back on and feel confident about what they're doing. Again, please try and invest in frequent home contact. And if you're providing choices for a student, it can't just be two choices, my way or the highway. Uh, that's basically tyranny and a threat. If you provide at least three choices, the student is more likely to feel like they're actually being given an, an option. Maybe do the assignment this way, record it, or take a zero. They have a couple of different options, and you know one of them could be the desired behavior that you started with, a negative response, and an alternative. Uh, that's a good formula for trying to provide uh, choices, or challenge by choice, as they call it in the behavior support field. Um, again, ignoring minor off-task behaviors is a good choice because responding to them may increase the behavior. Changing seats or assignments are a good idea and also providing clear and concise directions. Uh, classroom jobs to provide students an investment in that classroom community are an excellent idea and plan to have uh, daily work or behavior planners for students who are prone to forgetting those types of things. Let's look at some more Tier 1 interventions. The old basics, move a student to a new location in a classroom, can have multiple benefits. Using nonverbal cues where possible is desirable as this allows you to keep on moving with your instruction and not stop what you're saying. Um, some students need help as far as organizing themselves physically in the space. You may have to help organize their materials or provide a container for or a space for their belongings. This is especially true with uh, certain forms of disability. Um, you may need to provide reassurance or just help encourage the student to do the assignment and keep working. This might be the only thing that they need. Um, proximity control, be close to the students that are likely to be disruptive and be moving and circulating throughout the classroom at all times. This does not stop at any level, middle school, high school, still circulate throughout the classroom. A word about wait time. Pause before giving another direction. You can give a direction, but don't immediately follow it up with the repeat of that know that the human brain takes a couple of seconds to deal with a direction and act on it so please do wait um, you might ask students to repeat directions back that way you can hear that and understand what they know and at all times we should be modeling appropriate language behavior and attitude in the school oftentimes students will not see this anywhere else and we are where they can learn this
There are oh so many more assorted tier one interventions. Talk tickets akin to speeding tickets, you know, a minor infraction with a minor punishment. Try and talk to the parent. I cannot stress this enough on the phone, via email. Check in with students often on their behavior and their attitude. Uh, often, this small investment in building a relationship is what can make all the difference between that student being a productive member of your classroom and a disruptive member. Maybe you need to turn their desk around. Uh, use a timer. I have here for everything, maybe not for everything, but for a lot of things. Letting the students have a clear idea of how much work time they have is going to either cut down on their procrastination or they will pay a price for it. So, and also this provides them a means of just knowing how much more time do I have? Again, keeping all the cards on the table. Visual, visual schedules for classes, uh, what activities will follow, what assignments have been sent out. This allows everyone to know and communicate clearly as to what the expectations are. And teaching substitute words. If a student is prone to profanity or insult, maybe rather than scolding them or assigning them points, you can use this as a teachable moment and provide them some substitute appropriate words uh, for them to use. The same thing works for substituting appropriate actions for inappropriate actions. You can review the school-wide positive behavior intervention system uh, with the students. Make sure that your voice is in a calm and neutral tone. And again, really invest in building a relationship where it's mutual and reciprocal respect between you and all students in the room. All teachers need to teach their students both content that is aligned to our curriculum and skills, again, that are aligned to our curriculum. It might not be apparent to all of us that there are other skills that we're going to need to teach our students. And some of these are just organizational skills, your basic how do you take notes, how do you store notes, how can you keep all of your materials for your classes together, Maybe even how can you get your materials from class to class and get to your locker without being late or having just left your materials behind. Uh, and the other hand, we have some interpersonal skills that we can teach our students. Uh, conflict resolution, coping, and relationship skills. Students, no matter what their age, are going to come into conflict with other students, possibly with other teachers. If we can arm them with skills to deal with conflicts efficiently and safely, our job is going to get a lot easier and we can in fact focus more on the content and the content-based skills that we need to be developing. Uh, coping skills and relationship skills are just things that if the students don't have them at an appropriate developmental level, then either in class or with the aid of school counselors or mentors, we really need to help provide for our students. If we're not doing this, we're doing them a disservice and we're allowing them to continue with their educational career uh, in a way that might sabotage on them later. We can't just say that they should come to us knowing these things. If they don't have the skills, it's up to us to develop them. Let's begin with a quote by Jonathan Kozal. In schools with a history of chaos, the teacher who can keep the classroom calm becomes virtually indispensable. Our job in the classroom, aside from imparting skills and content driven by our curriculum, is to stay calm and steer the ship. With anywhere from 2 to 32 students in the classroom, a wide range of individual and group behaviors is a possibility. If the class is going exceedingly well, our job, stay calm, remain professional. If the class has skipped the rails and you need to go to plan B with your day's lesson, stay calm, remain professional. If students exhibit 
a number of disruptive behaviors. You fill in the blanks. You guessed it. Stay calm. Remain professional. It's important for us to remember that all student behavior, intentionally or unintentionally, is conveying a meaning, conveying a message from that student. And prior to reacting excitedly, nervously, or even aggressively, or yelling, screaming, losing our composure, we should take a step back and consider what message is this behavior conveying to us. Another thing to remember is that we're not going to recall all of the possible Tier 1 interventions in the moment. If a class goes in a way that you're not comfortable with and you didn't know how to react, go ahead and check out our list of interventions in this slideshow and see if there might be something that you can utilize at a later date. Thank you very much for working with me so far.